This is the Google Pixel 6a, a great budget phone for $450. In this video, I want to share four of the best and worst features of the Google Pixel 6a after one week of testing. The market for affordable Android smartphones has gotten really interesting and also competitive this year, which has made the Google Pixel 6a receive quite a lot of scrutiny for its final specs. Because there are some really attractive alternatives, such as the brand new Nothing Phone 1, which has some amazing specs for less money than the Google Pixel 6a. For example, it does have a 120 hertz OLED display as well as a very unique design with those cool lights. But that does not mean this new Google phone is a terrible choice because there are some Google specific features that you do get on this Android 12 device, such as screen calling which makes someone using an unrecognized phone number say who they are before you have to answer the phone call, which is great for eliminating scam calls and people fishing for your information. However, at this time of filming, this is currently only available in the USA and is coming to the UK soon. But cooler than this is the Google Google call hold feature which lets you call a business and if you're sat waiting in a queue for a representative you can literally put your phone down and it will notify you when you're finally talking to a human being. And of course because this phone has the Google Tensor chip just like the Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro we do get Magic Eraser which I don't even need to explain because I'm sure you know exactly what that is from the adverts we've seen millions of times all over the place. The all new Google Pixel 6 with Magic Eraser. First, let's talk about some of the best features on the Google Pixel 6a. And at number one is definitely the form factor. This phone is very lightweight and feels great in the hand and also the size of it with its 6.1 inch display makes it very easy to use single handed. So if you like to text with just your thumb, it's perfect for that. Although the phone is lightweight, this does not mean that the build quality has been sacrificed. You do have an aluminium outline around the side of the phone where you, where you grip it so it feels pretty good. And the back is plastic, but it does feel like glass. It's a bit like that glass stick that was on the Samsung S21 FE edition. It feels like glass to the touch. You would like be easily convinced that it was, but it is actually plastic. Now my second favorite feature is definitely the haptics. On the Google Pixel phones, these are very strong. So when you're typing, you really feel the vibration of the sensation. When you're typing and selecting things, when you do the uh, th thumbprint scanner, it makes a real type feeling in your hand. Very responsive in that regard. So you can feel stuff actually happening on the display. Now the are times where I enjoy this, but also it gets a little bit irritating. I found when I was using YouTube, like if I was just browsing around YouTube searching for a video, if you had the ringer turned on so you could hear your text notifications come in and your phone calls, every time you would select a video or scroll onto like a different page, like playlists or whatever, it would make like a really irritating beeping noise. just like a selecting noise. And the only way to avoid that was to put your phone into mute so you didn't get that beep every time you would select things in the menu. And obviously that would then mean you might miss phone calls now and again. At number three is the display. This is one of the most controversial areas of this phone. MKBHD talked about how uh, the 60 Hertz display didn't feel that smooth to him compared to like 60 Hertz on an Apple device because the animations are slightly different. Now I would agree on him in that respect, especially when I was browsing on like YouTube and things, it, it felt a little bit more clunky compared to the Apple version and I know I use the iPhone 13 Pro Max but I'm not that in tune to the 120 Hertz I literally send tech messages on this thing and like that's all I do so I, I understood what he meant there but I do think the actual display quality is still fantastic for this price point it is a OLED display so you have really nice colors and good black levels which you get with uh, OLED panels so it's pretty good it's not as good as the uh, 90 Hertz display obviously in the full size Google Pixel 6 with its 6.4 inch display. It's a little bit smaller at 6.1 inch. But regardless of your thoughts on the quality of the display, the actual user interface is what impresses me the most. The actual information that is displayed on the, the display, the widgets on the Google Android 12 looks really nice. The way it navigates is really easy to use, but the way you can add widgets and customize it is super easy. You literally just hold down on the homepage you can add a widget, you can also change your presets, and when you change your presets, your wallpapers will change color, and then all of the um, colors on the phone will change with that, so all of your like app icons and all them types of things will change in accordance. Finally, my fourth favorite feature is the improvement to the camera bump. Now, although the cameras aren't the best, they're very good in the Google Pixel 6 and also the 6 Pro. I think it's like a 50 megapixel camera that is binned down to 12 megapixels, but still looks very sharp because it's captured with all of those megapixels and then obviously scaled down. This has much older camera 
tech. It's very average camera tech. It's perfect for taking like a picture of like family or whatever and uploading it onto your Instagram. Although, you know, Instagram's not really a photo sharing app anymore. It's just full of all those reels with the recent update. But it looks so much better having that smaller camera bump. It doesn't gather as much dust compared to the Google Pixel 6 and it's almost flush. It's still there, so it's got that iconic look, but it is almost flush when you actually touch it. So it's very unnoticeable in your pockets. Next, let's talk about some of the bad things on the Google Pixel 6a. The first is the lack of wireless charging. This may not be a massive issue for you because you just throw it into the charging cable and charge it on your bedside table, but I quite like wireless charging when I throw things on my desk and I'm working during the day. Also, the lack of wireless charging means you can't charge your headphones on the phone. A really cool feature about the Google Pixel 6 was the fact it had two-way charging. So you could charge it wirelessly on a charging pad, but you could also charge other devices on the back of the phone. So if you had some AirPods or some wireless headphones, you could throw those onto the back of your Google Pixel 6 and it would charge them, which was pretty useful when you were traveling on the go and they needed a bit of a top up on the juice. The second worst feature is apps sometimes feel a little bit clunky. And I touched on this when I was mentioning YouTube and the weird noises it made when you would select videos and it was a bit irritating. I found especially on YouTube, which was a shock because obviously YouTube is owned by Google. And this is a Google phone, but it felt much worse than the iPhone experience. Sometimes when I was watching YouTube shorts, they weren't low Loading in full screen and there was like black bars either side of them and when you were scrolling up and down and selecting videos you did really notice but regardless of all this when I was testing some games like Subway Surfer they felt perfectly fine they ran really smooth you were responsive you could be you know, quite competitive with them when you were getting your high score nothing too major the third worst feature for some people may be the lack of a headphone jack I've seen a lot of complaints the fact that the headphone jack is being removed from the Google Pixel 5a on the 6a me personally I could not care less about this feature I've been using an iPhone since the iPhone 10 in 2017 that hasn't had a headphone jack. So I've acclimatized to just using wireless earbuds. And when you do purchase the Google Pixel 6a, there is a promotion on at the moment where you get free headphones with the purchase uh, at launch. So it doesn't really matter. You get a pair of brand new wireless headphones to go with your headphone jackless smartphone. And finally at number four is the fingerprint scanner and also the lack of face recognition. This phone does have a basically touch ID as you would call it on an Apple device. You can sign into it with your thumb. Works all right. It's a little bit slow. I don't feel it is as bad as the Google Pixel 6, that did feel really slow. This feels all right, nothing too much to complain about, but there is a lack of facial recognition. Now, obviously this is for security reasons, I think Google said, they, they, they haven't got it where it's 100% secure, whereas on like a Samsung phone, you have, you know, touch ID, face ID, and obviously a passcode, I know they're Apple terms, but you get my point. The more phones that I test, the more I begin to realize that actually these value-orientated Android phones are more than good enough for what we require on a day-to-day -day basis. For me personally, I do not need a 120 hertz display on my smartphone because I don't play any video games. I just use this for phoning people, texting people, listening to music in my car, and then watching some YouTube videos late at night when I'm going to bed and also scrolling on social media. 120 hertz is a nice feature to have and I enjoy it on my iPhone 13 Pro Max, but that isn't the reason why I own an iPhone 13 Pro Max. It's for the cameras. I have an iPhone 13 Pro Max because I need to take good pictures and also nice videos when I'm out and about for my job, which is creating videos online. So if I did not require that level of quality, quality or functionality, I would not even bother with an Apple device or an even more expensive Samsung device with all of those features and more RAM. I would just buy something like this that can take phone calls and send text messages. If you want to see my full review of the Google Pixel 6 and how it compares to the iPhone 13, you should check out this video next.